start the show, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Beef, the Beefmaster Education Endowment Fund. Thank you for everything you do for the cattle industry, this breed, and us. Thank you for supporting us. SEBA, the Southeastern Beefmaster Breeders Association. Uh, thank you for all you're doing, uh, especially for the Southeast, and look out for their sale every August in convention. Emmons Beefmasters, uh, Mr. Steve and Miss Cindy needs no introduction. Uh, thank you for what you do for the breed, and thank you for supporting us. CNM Ranches out of Kershaw, South Carolina, the Chick family. Thank you for what you all do for us. Uh, it means means a lot. Lissy's Beef Masters down in Texas. Uh, thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, and look out for their sales, multiple sales a year, plus some frozen genetic sales. Cottage Farms Beef Masters. Um, thank you for supporting us. And thank you for uh, what you do for the breed as well. Uh, been in it 50 years and um, that's saying something sea shepherd beef masters down in texas thank you for supporting us jones beef masters over in savannah tennessee mr clark jones uh, look out for his sale every june um has great great cattle and breeds just great stuff valor cattle company out of georgia uh thank you for supporting us and um we couldn't do it without any of you and we we really appreciate it Welcome to Beefmaster Banner. We're your hosts, Josh Morrison and Jared Strickland, along with Dr. Lance Bauer, the new executive vice president of BBU. How's it going, guys? I'm going good on my end. Got three inches of rain this weekend, so I definitely can't complain about that. It's good here. You know, I hope it would finally cool down. It hadn't really, but we did get a little bit of rain, so grateful for that. Fantastic. We got a little bit um, yesterday, not a ton, but we got a little bit. I'll take everything we can get. Especially this time of year, we're it's going to start frosting here, which we've already gotten two frosts um, back to back about two and a half weeks ago. So it's uh, I put out our first load of hay this weekend, actually uh, Saturday. So it's uh, I guess that season's among us. Yeah, yeah. I don't envy y'all for getting frosts and freezing and everything. <laughs> I would take a little bit of cooler weather. <laughs> uh. It's it's been nice though. It's been a nice fall so far. Yeah, it's been more of a mild fall here um in the Carolinas. Um I don't know what that means. For, I don't know if that means we're gonna pay for it when winter comes around about January, February, or if it's gonna if that's a good sign that it might not be quite as cold as it as always is, which we thankfully we normally warm up during the day. You know, it, it generally always above freezing during the day, so that's nice, but it'll get down it'll get really cold at night sometimes here um now when i say really cold you know people in the northwest of the united states might say you know teens is nothing you know that's warm to them but um uh, it's pretty cold to us so that's uh that's kind of what it does around here but uh tonight we are uh going to talk about whole herd reporting um it's funny i i just mentioned to dr bauer and jared a second ago that I have zero notes. Normally we have a list of notes that we kind of talk on, but I know absolutely nothing about it. So I'm going to be, um, hopefully can a ask some questions that, that maybe folks like me don't, that don't know about it can, can really get something about it. So Dr. Dr. Bauer, if you will, just kind of go into it and, um, just kind of give us the background on it. Um, maybe the why for why we have it and, uh, we'll go from there. Okay. No, not a problem. I think uh, whole herd reporting, it's something that BBU implemented long before I started, but what it is, it's a program that's done on a per head basis or per breeding cow basis. It's completely voluntary. Uh, but what happens is at the beginning of each year, you get a list of your cows that are of breeding age. You record the ones that you still have. You dispose of the ones that you don't have. Um, and you make all those, those notes for us. Uh, and then out of the cow, you get a registration of her calf uh, paid for with the fee to enroll her in whole herd reporting. Um, plus, that calf gets a free transfer up to 30 months of age. Um, and what it really does is for BBU, what it does for BBU is it gets us more data. Uh, we can work on some of those novel reproductive traits like stability, AFC, things like that. Um with whole herd data that's harder to work on with data that's not complete. It, um, you know, and you as a breeder, you're in, 
you're encouraged to do more with your cows and make sure that your cows are cold. But there's also incentive as a breeder because uh, right now the cost is $20 as of January 1. It'll go up to $25 per cow that you enroll. But with that $25, like I said, you get a registration of her calf and you get a transfer on her calf up to the time that they're 30 months of age included with that whole herd reporting fee. Um, this is a voluntary program, but it's one that I think is well worth it. And it can, it can save you some money as a producer and also help you see more, more of the direction that your herd's going on a, on a bigger view um, with more complete records. I, I agree with you, Lance, on that. I've, we've been doing, man, dad's moved into whole herd reporting. I'm trying to think how many, how long we've been in it, but I think it's been at least three years and, uh, I think you're you're right. It gives you a uh, a reason every year to make sure you're looking through your cattle and making sure you're pulling the coals out on a timely basis as well. That's something I noticed when we switched over that I was forgetting about some cows that I might have cold and just they were still in the system, you know. Uh, but and and like Lance mentioned, you know the saving money part of it. I, I mean. I started dollaring it out and definitely we were saving more money with the OR reporting. And I, I mean, guess, I mean, I'm, I'm, and I'm assuming, you know, you can dispose of cattle throughout the year. You don't have to wait till that list comes out. That's just to help you remember if you didn't to help kind of keep it clean. Correct. Yes. You can dispose of cattle throughout the year. Um, you know, that list is just going to come out at the beginning of the year. You're going to keep that clean. Um, and just it, yeah it helps you keep everything cleaner you can dispose throughout the year and then when you get it at the beginning of the year oh i forgot that i sold cow a uh let me put her on there otherwise i'm going to get charged 25 dollars. so i mean if you look at it you know right now if you do an online or come january 1 if you do an online entry at zero to nine months of age you're going to get charged 36 dollars. and then if you put that animal in a sale you're going to have a $30 charge on top of that. So you're at $66 instead of the 25. And how that yeah. works, I guess, is how you said it's um 25 per head. So you pay $25 yeah, we, per head of cattle you have. So if you've got, yes. you know, 50 cows, it's 25 times 50. Yes. And let me, that, let me get this file open real quick and see if I can find it. Now that's like I said, I keep saying that goes on your inventory. So if you're the way I looked at it, if you're selling quite a bit of calves as far as transferring them, I mean, that's where you're really saving money there as well. Cause let's say if you transfer 30 to 40% of your calf crop every year, think about how many, they know how many you're doing, you know, but that would, those are straight savings in your pocket right there for sure. Well, and I'm just, I got a little calculator. And so say everything's equal and you're going to register everything and then you're going to transfer 50 per, uh, let's just say, I've got it. It's like you got 25 head. And this is going to be for WHR versus the conventional registration. And you're say you're doing everything exactly the same on WHR for 25 head. You know, that's going to be $625 a year, gets you that registration plus the trans plus the transfer. And I said, you're going to do 10 transfers out of that 25 that you register. That's $625. Uh, you go with the conventional registration, you know, and I put that you're going to register them all at zero to nine months, which you may or may not, but if you did that, that's $900 and then 10 registration or 10 transfers on top of that, that brings you to $1,200. Practically that's, half price then. Yeah. So that's huge savings. That's a huge savings right there. Now, let me ask you there again, like I said, I'm, I'm going to ask a lot of probably um, small, I call them small questions, but let's, let's go to the embryo transfer side of it. So I've got some embryos that I put in at a calf grower you know, that's essentially, let's just say five calves um, out of that one cow. Now, how does that work? So as long as that donor is enrolled in WHR, you've paid the $25 for, 
you know, say she has a natural calf, plus you got those five embryo calves. So you record that natural calf as her natural calf. That $25, that's registration transfer of that. You record those five embryo calves because they're out of a dam that's enrolled in WHR. Same thing, $25 a head. Don't have the AI and ET fees. Plus you get the transfer up to 30 months. So it's still, it's still way cheaper. It's so still, you still, you're still get, cheaper. you get free transfer even on the ET calves also. Yes, free transfer oh, wow. on the ET calves and you're at the $25 charge instead of the $36 charge. And you're not paying the, the embryo transfer additional on top of that. Oh, okay. Wow. So you're at $25 for basically you get one calf at 25 plus each additional calf out of that cow for ET is $25 extra. I guess it's $25 a piece after that $25 a piece after that first one, but it's still, I mean, it's still saving, still saving money. Of money. Yeah. yeah. Saving I mean, it's, money. it's almost a no brainer really. I mean, yes, it is. And, and I always kind of, and it's because I've never really researched it. Jared and I was talked about a little bit, but I always kind of assumed that it was more for a, and when I say bigger breeder, I just mean more volume breeder, like as, as far as volume of cattle versus somebody that didn't have as many, but that's doesn't sound like that's the case. It sounds like it's for somebody with five head or 500 head. I mean, let me just, I'll run it real quick. I'll do five head all the way across the board. So, you know, at, and this is before transfers, but five head on WHR is 125. If you did five head and registered, well, let's just say you had four calves. You're at 144. You know, yeah, and then so you stand for two of those, you're at 204 versus 125. And even with this, even with that, you're like you said, you're still getting your inventory at the end of the year. Um, yeah which is nice because I, I'll be honest with you. I'll get on there. Just like Jared said, there's sometimes I'll get on there and I'll go, what have I been doing? Because I mean, there'll be multiple on there that I need to get, you know, either normally just dispose of, you know, if there's some over, you know, over a course of a year. And I just, I guess I just don't think about going in there and disposing of them. Oh, well, that, I mean, that's really helpful in itself. And you're essentially what? not paying any more. You're paying less for it than you would be just doing it regular. Well, and you're talking about like a uh, volume, volume breeder. So I just put in 200 head. So 200 head, you would get, you know, you'd be charged $5,000, but you get 200 registrations plus you get the transfers. So, I mean, you're right at 5,000. If you did 200 head and you only registered 150, you're at 5,400. And then you transfer 75 of those 50, you're at 7,650. Man. So I mean it's it works on on volume. I mean it, it works it saves money all the way across the board. Well and you can kind of look at it as a marketing standpoint too, because you can say, Hey, I'm in her whole her reporting, I'm reporting all my data, reporting all my cows, I'm I'm everything's up to date every year. So I mean I think there's more advantages to it also. Maybe you get the advantage as far as better data collection and as the breeder, you get that as a marketing tool, tool, too. Yeah, absolutely. And something that you kind of just brought up there that I, I'm going to ask too, which we, we do gather all of our data, but is there, I guess that would probably, there are some requirements as far as staying in whole herd reporting. Um, I know we, you probably have talked a little bit about that so far, but can you tell us the actual requirements to, I guess, stay in it? So you, to stay in it, what you need to do is you, like I said, you enroll the, or the, once you get enrolled, you do your inventory, you enroll those cows, you do your inventory once a year, you record a calf out of each cow that you have or a disposal code. So say, you know, she has a calf that died at birth. You don't, you record that calf and put disposed of died at birth and record a weaning weight on those calves. Now, I mean, if there's a disposal before weaning, record that disposal, but Really, it's up to weaning. Um, you know, we know there's a lot of culling that happens at weaning, so we don't go, you know, where there's no requirement past that. But recording a weaning weight on those calves or a disposal code, if they were disposed of or died before weaning, um, is vi or it's, it's a big part of the program. Sure. 
Sure. And I mean, so there's not, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of requirements, truthfully. I mean, it's what you're going to no. do anyways. No. And, and so the thing is, if you're worried, you know, you got a larger herd and you're like, well, that's a lot of money to cough up at one time at the beginning of the year. We've got a two pay option to where you can pay half at the beginning and half at the end, you know, so, and that's for anybody, you know, five head to 500 head. If you want to pay half of it at the beginning of the year and half of it later on, you can. Another way to look at the payment part, what I like about it is I know my set. Pretty much I know what my fees are going to be for the year. So I can budget that, you know, because obviously you're getting the free transfers and the free registrations later. So you kind of know what you're going to have to pay for your registration fees for the year instead of, you know, how I used to do it. You do, you know, we'd register some here and register some there, transfer some here, transfer some there, and you've got fees scattered out all throughout the year or you can kind of just go ahead and budget for what you need. I mean, I understand it's a it's a big chunk of money, maybe you know in two parts or whatever, but you kind of kind of can have a budget and go from there. I like that idea of it. It's it's really good for budgeting, and I, I mean I'll be honest with you, it's good on the BBU budgeting end too, uh, because you know the more people that are in whole herd, the more we know what's coming in. Uh, so being a hundred percent open right there, it's it's really good for us in terms of budgeting for the for the association. And you as an individual budgeting and I mean, you don't have to worry about, you know, say you do keep some to yearling before you decide to register them. You're not paying that additional fee at yearling. I mean, you can register up to however old you want out of WHR enrolled animals and get that registration. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, it, like I said earlier, it's, it's, I mean, kind of wonder what I've been doing the whole time, <laughs> you know, uh, doing it the way just the conventional way but uh I, now when somebody wants to get into whole herd reporting but never has what are the steps as far as do they call the office do they email somebody do they have to have their how does all this work so so you can either call the office or email member services at beefmasters.org um and we'll get you set up. I mean, we'll need your member number and everything. But on our end, is we'll go through, we'll enroll you. We'll get you that list of what we have listed as your active animals. You know, the first time is going to be a little more labor intensive if you haven't been in it for a while and haven't kept up with your herd through digital beef. But we'll get you a list of those active animals. And we can do it either one or two ways. We can send you a hard copy list. Or you can do it yourself online through a digital list, dispose of those animals, commit that, and then you're ready to go. Um, you know, and again, beginning of the year when the list comes out, they're due by May 1st every year is when your inventory is due. Um, but you can go on online, you can go through your whole herd inventory, dispose of anything you need to dispose of, validate it and commit it just like you would with registrations. Uh, it'll go through, generate your charges, um, or you can request a printed list. We can print you a list. You can go through, hand mark it off, send it back to the office, and we can get that input for you. Kind of going back to the the registration phase, you mentioned, you know, wait until they're older. So if you are doing it just a standard way, that fee does increase as the age of the animal increases right yes. is that as the age of the animal increases on a traditional registration the fee increases so come january 1 it'll be 36 dollars for zero to nine months if you do it online it'll be 42 at 10 to 14 months and then 54 at 15 to 18 months and then if you wait all the way until they're 19 months old it, it'll be 72 dollars for the registration yeah, and then up to that point with the whole herd, you'd still be free. Yeah, so you're still, yeah, you're still getting wow. that. So that gives you time to decide if you just. I, for my view, after being in whole herd reporting, I've been more apt to just register the animals anyway, uh, just because you know you've you've got that free of charge and you register them typically sooner. That way, 
I kind of like that idea because if we're taking DNA, I already go ahead and get the C number, get all that straight. It's pretty, it's a lot cleaner for me to do it like that. And you're not worried about the charge either. So, yeah, I mean, so why I, not? You know, why uh, not? Why not go ahead and register them? I mean, that would make you probably want to go ahead and register them when they're born. I mean, because at that point, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter. You, you've got it. Why not do it? Um, mm. Now, but I'm going to go back to the embryo thing for just a second. Something popped in my head here. So when, when we're looking at embryo calves, obviously we may not know what all's going to take, or, you know, if we, you said by May, some people may put in embryos later than that, you know, something like that. As far as the inventory goes, does in, does that part of it matter? Or is that just kind of come as your embryo inventory is not going to matter. It's if that dam that those embryos are out of was enrolled in your WHR for that year. So if say you say your say your donor cow died, you know, and you got one more set of embryos to put in or something, it'd probably be cheaper if you've got five or six of them coming to keep her active on your inventory for a year, get those embryo calves. And then dispose over. Yeah, and then dispose over. That would that's definitely something to remember because I think dad ran into that one time with the having the disposal too quick on a eat on a yeah owner because that uh so that'd be something to remember if you definitely got calves coming. Yeah, and and it's something to remember. So say you got some calves later in the year after you've turned in your inventory, it's something to remember. You know, say you got a November calf. And you're going to wait to register it. Make sure that you leave that dam active before you get rid of, I mean, before you register her last calf. Mm. And then once you register her last calf that you're going to have out of her, you can inactivate her. Okay. And and there's, when you go through and you, you clean up your inventory and you do your Inventory, there are disposal codes. There's a drop down with all those disposal codes on it. Um, so they're great to use. Uh, my least favorite one, and it makes it hard for us to utilize as BBU, is there's one that says disposed other. <laughs> I would avoid that one if at all possible. Um, you know, if she was disposed because her calves weren't any good, you know, put there's an inferior production. If her udder was bad, there's a bad udder. There's a all sorts of different disposal disposal options, um, but the disposed other just kind of goes into a category on its own, and it's hard for us to utilize when we're you know looking at these different traits. Now, this is going to probably get off whole herd a little bit, but that kind of sparked my interest. With those disposal codes, where do they go? Or do they go into the EP like into EPDs, or how does how do y'all utilize those? So those disposal codes will actually go into everything other than disposed other goes into the stability EPD. Um, so we utilize that in terms of determining fertility and everything for the stability EPD. So it's vital. It's really important, truthfully. Yes. To... And so, so stability is in a, another part of whole herd because everybody has to report their inventory every year. Stability is calculated based on those herds that are in whole herd reporting. So you're not losing credit or getting credit if you're not in whole herd reporting. You're just everything you've got is based off of those animals in whole herd reporting that are related to your animals. Okay. That makes sense. So so you take, so like a four-year-old cow, she comes up open, you call her for open. So that goes into that calculation. Yeah. You know, but if you put other, then you, does it doesn't help. No, it's like, okay, that makes sense. Well, and the reason I asked that is, you know, I've not really had the thought, but I'm sure there's somebody out there that's thought, hmm, maybe I shouldn't put that there, you know, or something. So that's why I asked the question as as to what how that's utilized. But that makes a lot of sense. I mean, and it seems like everything, and th and that's the thing I like about our especially digital beef now is everything has a purpose, right? None of it's none of it's just useless data that we're putting in. I mean, it's all just even even to that, it all is used for something and goes to something for the future. Yeah, absolutely. And 
it's you know if you look at whole herd like if you go to your if you're on whole herd and you go to your whole herd reporting which is there there's some really neat just off the top reports that talks about you know your pounds of calf weaned per cow exposed the percentage that you weaned the number you weaned how many animals were in your assessment um you know it's really got some really interesting insights for you there just without even digging yeah That's i think i noticed once to have it had like percent wean every year or something like that yeah that was pretty neat yeah it's pretty cool i mean it's so there's a lot of things so what we're getting at folks enroll in whole herd reporting <laughs> Because it's, I mean, it helps the baby you, but it helps you as a breeder. Um, I can tell you that I'm going to jump in because I've not done it, but I mean, it's, it's just, it just makes too much sense to not do it. If you've got a, if you happen to have a donor a cow or doing ET work, it, it's a no brainer for sure on that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't even realize the the cost savings with it that's 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 pretty good and and if you're using so say you're using a uh you know say you got a herd of registered recips that you're using you can enroll those registered recips at that 25 dollars as your inventory and they carry that embryo calf well that 25 dollars covers the embryo calf and the transfer or say you put you know you put a cleanup bowl with them after you've got the embryo calf you know but they got a registration and a transfer out of that too. So you kind of huh. get to double dip there. If you got registered recips, like I said, if you're on a calf razor type deal, or you got just a set of commercial cows as recips, you know, still it's a $25 for registration and transfer up to 30 months. Yeah. But that's, that's uh, yeah, that's still pretty cool. Um, that that's the way all that works. I mean, it's just, you know, like I said, it's just something that, I'm glad you brought this up because we were, we were actually going to try to finish our EPD series tonight. And, uh, Dr. Bauer texted me and said, what if we did? He said, we need to do whole herd reporting first. I said, that's perfect. I said, we'll do it because it really made me excited about it because I didn't like to say I didn't have, <laughs> excuse me. I knew absolutely nothing about it. Um, so, and Jared's been trying to tell me, he's like, you need to do it. You need to do it. So now we're, uh, now that we've got this one behind us, I know we're going to do it. And I hope that lots of other people after they listen to this has gotten enough information to jump in and, and do it as well. I, I highly recommend it. You know, like I said, we've been doing it three or four years and I, I really, I really like it. It makes things simple, keeps it clean. Uh, it helps you, you know, like I said, keeps, keeps you on a budget as well. And it saves you money, which we're, so we're all trying to do is get to the bottom line, make it work. And, and uh, I saw the dollars pretty quick once I changed over. So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, Doctor Bauer, did we miss anything? Uh, did we kind of hit all of our points there? I think we hit all our points, and and I just encourage everybody to get onto whole herd reporting. I mean, for yourself as well as for BBU. I mean, like you, like you've mentioned, Jared, it's it's going to save you money. It's going to save the producer money um, getting on there um, the first year. And that's the thing we hear is, well, it's so much work to keep track of inventory. Well, the first year is a little tough to get through sometimes if you haven't kept track of it to start with. But after that, I mean, it's you can call throughout the year and record throughout the year. And then next year when it pops up, you're pretty much clean and you just got to take care of one or two animals. Yeah. I agree with you. I think that initial step, and it really ain't too bad, but it, you know, that initial step, once you get it going, it's, it's, a, it's a cakewalk. Then. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jared, can you believe that we've made it to the end of year number three? This is our last episode for the year for folks that don't know. That's hard to believe. I think so this is uh, <laughs> time for our December break for the holidays and, uh, we always like to do that and spend time with the family because believe it or not, uh, this can take up a lot of time. This can take up a lot of time away from family. Um, and 
we just try to spend take December and spend it with with our families and uh don't worry we talk plenty about it every day uh until January when it comes back because we try to that's kind of our time to regroup and and get some more subjects and and more stuff lined up for next year too so um it's been a fun year that's for sure it's kind of flew by um yeah it went by quick this time Dr. Bauer you come on a lot more this year and we really appreciate that and I know we've got some things in the works uh for next year that that I think is going to be really everybody's going to like too um some of those little short episodes we were talking about we're we're going to try to work work on those and get those going um but uh we really appreciate you uh coming on as much as you have this year I I know with your especially with your new position um this this is just another thing that takes up a busy, busy day. So we really appreciate it. Well, thank, you all. thank you all. Thank you all for having me on. So, and it's been great. And like you said, I look forward to doing some short segments next year, along with some of these big full full length ones, but some short segments to keep everybody in the know of, you know, what's going on at BBU and, and the things that are happening. Cause I think we've got a really exciting year uh, planned. Um, you know, we'll have, some board meetings in February in conjunction with NCBA there in San Antonio. Um, our summer meetings, our May meetings have actually moved back into June, which is kind of where they were when I started with BBU, uh, moved back into June. And then our convention is going to be in October this year at the Menger Hotel in San Antonio. So just, it'll be a fun time that last week in October, it'll go over, um, over Halloween going to be a good time and at the Menger. Uh, so put that on your calendar, put all that on your calendar. It, it, we're, we're going to, we're prepped and ready for a good year. And I've heard some, uh, rumblings. I know there was nothing set in stone, but I've heard a few rumblings of, of some special things that may be happening at the convention. And I don't think anybody's going to want to miss it for sure. Yes. Yeah, going to be great. We're sitting here talking about a year from now, but everybody, <laughs> you turn around twice, it'll be here. I promise. It's, it's here before uh, you know. It'll do it. Um, but Dr. Bauer, we really appreciate it. And um, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and a very Merry Christmas. Uh, since this is our last one, this is, uh, this is it for us for the year. So um, please remember to always keep jesus christ at the center of, of christmas that's what it's all about and uh we hope everybody has a wonderful holiday season josh one yeah. thing just for those that are listening for the office for thanksgiving we will be off that wednesday thursday and friday um of thanksgiving to allow our staff members to get to spend some time with family uh they put in hard work on the, the whole year um so we'll give them those three days to spend some time with family and then for Christmas, we'll be off from the 23rd through January 1st. We'll resume normal business hours on January 2nd. So just give everybody in the office some time to spend with family and focus on family and, and the things that are important this time of year. So mm -hmm. looking forward to great holidays and looking forward to a great new year coming up. Absolutely. Absolutely. It'll be great. And, uh, it's going to be a little while before we say this again, but we'll see everybody on the next episode. See ya. See ya. Well, we want to thank everybody for listening to the Beefmaster Banner podcast. Uh, please know that we are on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and we are on YouTube. Just search Beefmaster Banner. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. We love hearing from you, um, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.